Saul Bass was an American graphic designer and Academy Award winning filmmaker, best known for his design of motion picture, title sequences, film posters, and corporate logos. During his 40 year career, Bass worked for some of Hollywood's most prominent filmmakers, including Alfred Hitchcock, Otto Preminger, Billy Wilder, Stanley Kubrick, and Martin Scorsese. Among his most famous title sequences are the animated paper cutout of a heroin addict's arm for Preminger's The Man with the Golden Arm, the credits racing up and down what eventually becomes a high angle shot of a skyscraper in Hitchcock's North by Northwest, and the disjointed text that races together and apart in Psycho. Bass designed some of the most iconic corporate logos in North America, including the Bell System logo in 1969, as well as the AT&T Globe logo in 1983 after the breakup of the Bell System. He also designed Continental Airlines' 1968 Jetstream logo and United Airlines' 1974 Tulip logo, which became some of the most recognized airline industry logos of the era. Saul Bass was born on May 8, 1920 in the Bronx, New York, to Eastern European Jewish immigrant parents. He graduated from James Monroe High School in the Bronx and studied part-time at the Art Student League in Manhattan. He worked in New York as a freelance commercial artist for advertising agencies and companies, including Warner Brothers. In 1946, Saul Bass went to Los Angeles where he continued to work as a commercial artist. By 1952, he had a practice of his own, which was registered from 1955 as Saul Bass and Associates. On April 25, 1996, Saul Bass died in a hospital in Los Angeles at the age of 75. So there seemed to be a real opportunity to use titles in a new way. He began his time in Hollywood in the 1940s designing print advertisements for films including Champion, Death of a Salesman, and The Moon is Blue, directed by Otto Preminger. His next collaboration with Preminger was to design a film poster for his 1954 film Carmen Jones. Preminger was so impressed with Bass's work that he asked him to produce the title sequence as well. This is when Bass first saw the opportunity to create a title sequence which would ultimately enhance the experience of the audience and contribute to the mood and the theme of the movie within the opening moments. Bass was one of the first to realize the creative potential of the opening and closing credits of a movie. Before the advent of Bass's title sequence in the 1950s, titles were generally static, separate from the movie, and it was common for them to be projected onto certain cinema curtains, the curtains only being raised right before the first scene of the movie. Bass became widely known in the film industry after creating the title sequence for Otto Preminger's The Man with the Golden Arm. Bass decided to create an innovative title sequence to match the film's controversial subject of heroin addiction. He chose the arm as the central image as it is a strong image relating to heroin addiction. The titles featured an animated white on black paper cutout arm of a heroin addict. As he hoped, it caused quite a sensation. For Alfred Hitchcock, Bass produced effective, memorable title sequences inventing a new type of kinetic topography, letters that move and which are animated. He used that for North by Northwest, Vertigo, and Psycho. It was this kind of innovative, revolutionary work that made Bass a revered graphic designer. He designed title sequences for more than 40 years and employed diverse filmmaking techniques, from cutout animation for Anatomy of a Murder, to fully animated mini-movies such as the epilogue for Around the World in 80 Days, and live action sequences. His live action opening title sequences often served as prologues to their films and transitioned seamlessly into their opening scenes. These time before title sequences either compress or expand with startling results. The title sequence to Grand Prix portrays the moments before the opening race in Monte Carlo. The title sequence to The Big Country depicts the days it takes a stagecoach to travel to a remote western town. And the opening montage title sequence to The Victors chronicles the 27 years between World War I and the middle of World War II when the film begins. Toward the end of his career, he was rediscovered by James L. Brooks and Martin Scorsese, who had grown up admiring his film work. For Scorsese, Saul Bass created title sequences for Goodfellas, Cape Fear, The Age of Innocence, and Casino, his last title sequence. His later works with Martin Scorsese saw him move away from the optical techniques he had pioneered and move into the use of computerized effects. Bass's title sequence featured new and innovative methods of production and startling graphic design. 
In some sense, all modern opening title sequences that introduce the mood or theme of a film can be seen as a legacy of Saul Bass's innovative work. In particular, though, title sequences for some recent movies and television series, especially those whose setting is during the 1960s, have purposely emulated the graphic style of his animated sequences from that era. Some examples of title sequences that pay homage to Bass's graphics and animated title sequences are Catch Me If You Can, X-Men First Class, and the opening in the AMC series Mad Men. Saul Bass designed emblematic movie posters that transformed the visual of film advertising. Before Bass's seminal poster for The Man with the Golden Arm, movie posters were dominated by depictions of key scenes or characters from the film, often both juxtaposed with each other. Saul Bass's posters, however, typically developed simplified symbolic designs that visually communicated essential key elements of the film. For example, his poster for Man with a Golden Arm with a Jagged Arm and an Off-Kilter Topography startly communicates the protagonist's struggle with heroin addiction. Bass's iconic Vertigo poster with its stylized figures sucked down into the nucleus of a spiral vortex captures the anxiety and disorientation central to the film. His poster for Anatomy of a Murder, featuring the silhouette of a corpse jarringly dissected into seven pieces, makes both a pun on the film's title and captures the moral ambiguities within which this courtroom drama is immersed. He created some of his best-known posters for films directed by Otto Preminger, Alfred Hitchcock, Billy Wilder, and Stanley Kubrick, among others. His last commissioned film poster was created for Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, but it was never distributed. His poster work spanned five decades and inspired numerous other posters and graphic designers to this day. Designing titles and movie posters wasn't his only contribution to filmmaking. During the 1960s, Bass was asked by directors and producers to produce not only title sequences for their films, but also to visualize and storyboard key scenes and sequences with them. Bass has the unusual credit of visual consultant or pictorial consultant on five films. For Spartacus, Bass, as visual consultant, designed key elements of the gladiator school and the storyboarded the final battle between slaves and Romans. John Frankenheimer, the director of Grand Prix, had Bass storyboard, direct, and edit all but one of the racing sequences for his film. For West Side Story, Bass filmed the prologue, storyboarded the opening dance sequence, and created the ending title sequence. In 1964, Bass directed a short film entitled The Searching Eye during the 1964 New York World's Fair. He also directed a short documentary film called Why Man Creates, for which he won an Academy Award in 1968. Bass co-directed with his wife Elaine several other short films, two of which were nominated for Academy Awards, Notes on the Popular Arts in 1977 and The Solar Film in 1979, the latter for which Robert Redford was the executive producer. In 1974, he made his only feature-length film as a director, the visually splendid, though little-known science fiction film, Phase 4, a quiet, haunting, beautiful, and largely overlooked science fiction masterwork. In addition to his work in Hollywood, Saul Bass was also a famous graphic designer, responsible for some of the best-remembered, most iconic logos in North America, including the Bell Telephone logo and a successor AT&T Glow. Other well-known designs were the Continental Airlines, Dixie, and United Airlines. An analysis of Bass's corporate logos found them to have an unusual longevity. The most common cause of the end of Bass's corporate logo was the demise or merge of the company, rather than a corporate logo redesign. The average lifespan of a Bass logo is more than 34 years. On May 8, 2013, Bass's 93rd birthday was celebrated by a Google Doodle. This is just one of the many examples of how his work is still important and inspires designers around the globe. So what is your advice to students all? Learn to draw. If you don't, you're going to live your life getting around that yeah. and trying to compensate for that. It's like now, so when the problem is there, instead of doing a drawing when you have to do it, you know, to, to, to deal with the communication issue, you find another lesser way to do it. It's like you have to do this. Instead of forthrightly dealing with it, you have to sort of turn your arm and twist your shoulder and, and do a solution that comes out as a square or a triangle or a, or a, or a, or a circle. You know, and that's ridiculous. You can't get away with that. 
It's a crippling absence that, and the unfortunate thing is, you can get by with it without it, and you can even get a job and you can move to a certain point, but then when you realize, that's when you realize that you really wish you knew how to draw, and it's too late because you'll never go back to school. You'll never have the discipline to take a night class. You could, and you can't afford the drop in salary anymore. You've geared your life to that money and you're finished. You're never going to learn how to draw. And isn't that awful?